one of the things you're talking about exercise, and I think a point that needs to be made is in the physical exercise, it hurt. It was hard. Mm -hmm. and, and I think too often. And I didn't like it at, the moment. <laughs> at that time. I did not like doing all and that And too extra work. often in our spiritual lives, we avoid that, which yeah. is difficult. And, and we almost take it as, as it must not be from God when the reality is that the difficulties, those, you know, I mean, we can all have faith uh, when things are going easy. But what happens when things start going tough? You know, in those situations where God allows to come to us to test our faith. For Saul, for example, he said that God said uh, through Samuel the prophet, he said, wait, you know, but we go to the Israelites at the Red Sea. And in, in that case, the test was go, you know, but it looked impossible to them. But God brought them down to a tight place where the only way their faith was going to grow was to go against uh, all of their senses. All of human devising. And, and we're all going to be brought to a test like that. In fact, we are day by day. Right. And, and if we're wanting to be ready when Jesus comes again, uh, our faith is going to have to grow. And it's not going to grow unless we really um, work it out. You know, put ourselves, God's going to put us to the test, but we're going to have to have that endurance that uh, Saul didn't what, have. So what's that text? I know that you was reading a text uh, that's Hebrews, in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, there's a wonderful text. Uh, in, in the context of the return of Christ, where the Apostle Paul is writing here in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse um, 35, it says, Therefore, don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, yes. so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who's coming will come and will not tarry. For the just shall live, or rather now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, in my, uh, draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Verse 39, but, if, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. So it's, again, it's all about faith. It's all about trusting in God. If he says, go, go. A faith that endures. A faith that endures. It cannot just be, you know, we're just, what are they... What, what's the, I'm thinking of this saying, it's um, fair weather Christians. Yeah. Many times we're just fair weather Christians. We can all go to church and say, praise God and praise God this, and that's good. That, I, I'm not making fun of that. We need to praise God. But the problem of it is, it's easily said, but many times in our own lives, the minute something comes up, I, again, why in the world does the world not think that maybe the earth or this world is coming to an end with the earth? Because they don't see Christians that are walking the walk, that are living by faith. Do they? I mean, as a total picture, I mean, how many people are coming up to any one of us and say, you, know, you, you are, are really letting me realize that we need to get our lives right with Jesus Christ. Well, and I think mm -hmm. that as we get our life right with Jesus Christ, remember, there's a lot of bumps and hills oh, and potholes right. and everything in the that's road. Right. Because it seems to me sometimes... When I say, God, I'm there with you, the next thing I know, I got a problem. Yeah, but right. you know what? I always overcome, and we talk about it in our right. studio, and that is that, you know what? God always takes care of our big things, and even the little things, but he's always there for it's us. It's always there for us. Okay, well, here we go, another break, but we'll be right back to wrap this up. I hope you've been enjoying your time, so don't go away. We will be right back. As Christians, God has called us to boldly share our faith. And personally, I find that sharing my faith helps to keep my spiritual experience alive. But sometimes I don't know exactly what to say. That's why Christian literature is such an excellent tool. But let's face it, sometimes even sharing a book can be intimidating. That's why we're going to help viewers like you come up with creative ways to share your faith. Whether you felt it's an intimidating thing to do, or maybe you just felt you didn't have time, we're going to help you be an effective everyday evangelist. But we're not going to come up with all the ideas. We want you to write to us and let us know about ways you've shared Christian literature that have been effective. Or maybe you have testimonies of people. Or maybe you yourself were reached by finding Christian literature. For example, we had one woman contact us and tell us that she came to the Lord because of a book she found in the trash can at the laundromat. Isn't that amazing? That's exactly what we're talking about. Now don't get the wrong idea. Don't go throw all your books in the trash can. The point is that your books can be effective to reaching people for the kingdom of God. And when we do our part by getting books out, even in the most unlikely places, God can and will use those books to touch hearts and to change lives. And He'll make His Bible come alive in their lives. 
So I pray you'll partner with us as we reach the world, one book at a time. Have you ever wondered why some married couples seem to look alike, especially when they have been together for a long time? Studies have shown that there is real evidence as to why couples who have been married for a long time tend to look similar to each other. According to research, the increase in facial similarity results from decades of shared emotions. This happens because of something called mimicry. When couples have spent many years together and they've shared thousands of smiles and frowns, their facial muscles start to take on similar patterns to each other. It's also common to mimic each other's habits, which emphasizes physical similarities. And isn't it interesting to see how some people look a lot like their pets? God tells us in His Word that by beholding, we become changed. Every day, we are faced with choices. What we eat, who we spend time with, where we go, and what we do. What we listen to, and what we look at. All of these things have an impact on us, and over time, they can and will shape the person that we are. Scripture says, whatsoever things are true and honest, whatsoever things are just, pure and lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and praise, think on these things. If we make the Bible our guide, we will be the person God has designed us to be. Out there for today, so watch out. Can't find any uplifting spiritual food on the radio? Realize that everything you see on TV is nothing but trash? Tired of lugging around your favorite Bible study books and inspirational music? You can now get all of your favorite Ellen White books on your very own MP3 player. Just go online to www.remnantpublications.com. Select the iPod bundle of your choice and we'll do the rest. We'll load over 4 gigabytes of powerful inspiration from more than 100 CDs onto your brand new iPod. When you order, don't forget to add additional Spirit of Prophecy books that we'll also preload for you, including Education, Living the Life of the Life Giver, The Ministry of Healing, Steps to Christ for a Sanctified Life, and the King James or New King James Audio Bible. At last, you can get all five Conflict of the Ages books, all preloaded onto your very own iPod, starting at just $399. Welcome back. Time to finish this great story up. I hope you read the whole thing because we leave parts of it out. Pastor, you had a great point. I want to hear it. I know the viewers do too. Well, the point was that, you know, Saul lost the kingdom because of his lack of endurance. When his Christian experience came to a point, he had a bump in his spiritual road, uh, he didn't have the faith to, to press forward through that trial. And, uh, you know, Saul, as I said, lost the kingdom, That's right. but we're going to lose, he lost his kingdom. We're going to lose the kingdom, the kingdom if we don't have a faith, if we don't now, through our personal time with Christ, establish the kind of faith that will press forward beyond our, our, our feelings, beyond what we see and feel, that will press forward and take God at his word. We're not just going to lose an earthly kingdom, we'll lose eternal kingdom. Absolutely. And, and you know, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when God is calling you to do something, first off, it's gotta be judged by the, you can't just say, I heard this little voice out there because the devil tempts us too. By the word of God, when he's asking you to do something, don't look to the left and don't look to the right. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. No matter what you think the consequence is, do it. If he says, go, go. If he says, stop, stop. Remember, faith is an exercise. And, um, Get in the Word of God. It will come alive for you. We're sorry to leave you, but until next time, you too can have a better way of life. Don't put it off. By working together, 1.7 million copies of The Passion of Love were distributed around the country, resulting in an unprecedented partnership with Walmart that led to over a thousand Bible studies. By working together, over six million copies of the Ten Commandments twice removed were shared around the world, resulting in more than 20 churches now keeping the Bible Sabbath. By working together, we have shipped almost a million Bibles to spiritually thirsty Christians in Africa, touching the lives of 20 million people for Christ. Working together is what allows Remnant Publications to spread truth-filled books around the world to hasten the Lord's coming. Will you join us in that mission? Will you help us reach the world for Jesus, one book at a time?